15. And so I have with us another one of our recurring guests, Tamara Shoemaker. She's the 2024 Education Woman of the Year from MCWT. She's uh, written a book that's very popular on Amazon that teaches uh, teachers who you know may have a lot of skills, but cybersecurity is a pretty esoteric topic. And so she helps them explain it to her students, uh, his, he or she explain to their students how cybersecurity works. Did I get that right? Did I sum it up correctly? Yeah, pretty good. I mean, we we base that book on the higher education standards, right? So that um, that are out there, they're guidelines, not standards. Sorry, the educators would kill me right now for saying standards when it's an actual guidelines, right? They have academic freedom to teach what they want to teach, but they have a guideline that shows them what to put into um, an engineering program or a comp sci program or an IT program in, as far as cyber and what to cover and, and, and what depth to cover and all that lovely stuff. So that's a good resource to start with, but there's really no connection between higher education and secondary education. Uh, and so what we wanted to make sure is that we wanted to make sure that when we were advising teachers in secondary education, middle school and high school teachers, how to what to teach in cyber, we wanted to make sure that it, it transferred over. Right. So that that they were teaching something that would prep them for when they went over, went, went to a university or college. Um, and so it'd be a nice, easy transition. Um, and it's also based on, you know, I'm a big my husband and I are both big believers on the nice um, workforce framework. It's also based on that as well. So, you know, all those higher education and all those things that eventually is going to lead to a career for these kids. We wanted to make sure that that stuff was covered while they're in middle school and high school. And we got enough resources to those teachers that are trying to do that battle right now. And uh, you were listening in on the conversation previous with Richard. I was only guessing, but I mean, how big is the cybersecurity professional shortage now? I know there's a, you can get your pretty much pick of jobs at this point, right? Right. So across the country right now, we have 450 million open jobs. Um, uh, and 450,000, I think you mean. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, right. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Say. And then over a million. <laughs> We're going to have a hard time growing 450 million. Right, over a million <laughs> globally, though, right? So you've got right. close to, right, globally, it, it's it's completely different, right? A whole different kind of a situation. Yeah. Here in Michigan, we've got about 14,000 that are open. So even yeah. if you don't want to move anywhere, you, you you know, we still have a ton of openings. But again, I think one of the things, and I think Terry alluded to this sort of a little bit, was like, not only are they open, but you want to make sure that the folks that you're going to be hiring are properly trained and educated in this space, right? It's, it's just not just everybody come on down and, and whatever. And so that's the other reason that it's so important that we made sure that these resources that we're getting teachers are really good resources that can make them, you know, be able to, to, to train them the way that they're going to need to be trained once they keep moving through and get certifications and get, you know, get their degrees and all the things that they're going to need, you know, the knowledge, skills and abilities that they'll need when they go get those jobs. Yeah, well, let's stay, let's stay on this line of, of thought, sure. though. When, when the teachers are reading this book and then they're taking the information in and then they're sharing it with their students, are they giving students enough to actually be knowledgeable on cybersecurity or is it really more like a, a gateway drug to get them interested to go take a deeper dive, to go study more so they can become cybersecurity experts? Where does it fit in the pantheon there? So... That's a really good question, Terry. So, so the the Cyber Patriot program that I run is sort of that gateway drug you're talking about, right? Okay. That gets them involved. That gets them excited. Um, and and at the at the silver level, they're really just getting an awareness and they're learning how to sort of protect themselves. Once they start going up in the levels, then they start to really learn this stuff and they really start to get some hands-on experience um, in, the, in the gold and the platinum level, right? So those kids you could hire right out of high school. They'll have certs when they come out of high school, they'll be ready to go. Um, uh, the book was a supplement for the educators to make sure that they could actually weave this, because this, the Cyber Patriot program is an after-school program. And so they were, they were, um, um, organically weaving material into their everyday uh, comp sci or, or engineering program. But it, again, it was just haphazard, whatever they happened to know, whatever they happened to fall, you know, come up against. And so we wanted to make sure that, that we had a nice standardized way of them being able to do that on a larger scale so that they would be actually teaching. So they would come out of school with certs, with a knowledge base that can be built on. They wouldn't necessarily be ready to go into employment but they would be much closer to where they needed to be. 
you know, a, a, an associate's degree would get them, you know, that starting job and then off to, you know, and, but then again, you know, the way they want to make the big money, you know, they were going to need, you know, a, a bachelor's and a master's and a, a ton of, of certs. But again, the cyber, between the Cyber Patriot program and this book, we hope to really get them that head start. Well, let's that talk makes... about the Cyber Patriot program. October is the first month of the competition, right? So it's it it, it the registration closed on October second, ah. and then they've got between October twentieth and October uh, I'm sorry October tenth and October twentieth to do some of the the practice image the practice round so that they can get ready for the actual actual first competition which starts November fourteenth through seventeenth, and that's that 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 range is because they get to pick the day that they compete on so they decide between the fourteenth and seventeenth which day works best for the teacher for the for the kids, and then they open that program up and they've got four minute, four hours to complete the mission and of course that's on a uh that's on a microsoft um uh, operating system on a linux operating system and then there's cisco challenges thrown in all over hmm. very very cool yeah. and so uh, tlas or technical language acronyms are always super fun for me and i'm looking at one now and so i don't know if it's the ysis or the wycys or what we're actually it's so they're they're saying it they're they're pronouncing it WeSys now and it's for We Sisters. It's actually women in cybersecurity. Women in cybersecurity, and you, lady, are the president of that organization. I I know I know we we worked we worked for um, over three years trying to get a regional affiliation put together. So I started when I was working with the auto ISAC and we were having meetings and we were getting it together. We were just getting kind of um, frustrated with trying to get through the system and try to get us a, 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 a regional chapter put together. But finally in June, we got it stood up. And Congrats. Um, you right. did a little tour then, of Michigan to go show off. We your, did. Your that was a lot of fun too. So we wanted to make sure what. The, so the the thing is, is that Michigan Wisis is free to to join the affiliate, and so anyone can join that. Um, if you want to be a part of the global Wisis um, uh, organization, which is where you can get all of the free uh, mentoring and um, uh, uh, there's a webinar like every other day uh, by some um, amazing woman who's teaching us something cool down in the machine that we really need to know and all the, all the resources that you can get globally going to the, the, the annual conference, all that kind of good stuff. You have to be a global member, so you have to join the global member. But to join anything um, at, uh, underneath that, so to be able to come to Michigan meetings, it's totally free. And and if you happen to be a global member that, you know, you just have to go in there and click Michigan and suddenly you get all of our, our information. And so that was that this whirlwind tour of Michigan was all about was getting the word out because we knew we already had 195 gals that were global members in the state of Michigan. And so we wanted to connect with all of those guys so that we can get it together and then we could grow. And um, we also put together um, regional um, coordinators as well. So I've got a regional coordinator in Grand Rapids. I've got one in the Upper Peninsula. I've got one over in the Mount Pleasant area. I'm looking right now for one in um, the Lansing area uh, and the Traverse City area. And so we we did these this tour across everywhere, right? So we were in Detroit um, in in aug late August for uh, the the uh, the cyber conference that was there, and then we were invited to Secure World. And we had both a booth and we had an opening. We actually had a session. So we had a session meeting there as well. Um, and then we went over to um, Ford had their on October 1st. They had their grant, their kickoff for Cybersecurity Month, which was an amazing event in the new Ford um, Activity Center. They redid their conference center and it is a spectacular venue now. And we were able to do that and they simulcast that globally. Um, and we had I was uh, on a panel for that um, as the WESIS president. And then we were um we, had, we were able to take a group shot of all the student chapters that attended. So that was really cool. So we got to get them together then. And then right after that, the minute that that meeting ended, I had to get in the car and drive up north. So uh, up north at Northern University, they were, had their third annual cybersecurity conference. And um, I uh, had a morning session on that. And then we had an afternoon meeting on that. And that that afternoon meeting was off the charts. I mean, I was just really impressed. I was kind of disappointed. It was scheduled for the last day after the conference. And so I thought, nobody's going to, it's three days up north. They're going to go hit uh, outside and enjoy the weather and, and, the, and the, you know, everything you can see up there. Um, but but it didn't happen like that. And, and the meeting room was way far away from where the conference was, you know, as a walk or whatever. And so I thought, oh, this is going to be, in, you know, 
a dud, right? But instead, the room was packed out. We had to send for more lunches. Um, the meeting ended up uh, with, because we had students in the room and we had professionals in the room, it ended up being this spontaneous mentoring session that was just amazing. And so um, we're pretty excited about that. So we made some pretty good coverage. Like I said, I'm still looking for a couple of folks. So that when we do this, we want to make sure that we cover all of Michigan, not just the I-94 corridor. want to make sure that everybody is supported, that everybody knows about all the things that are happening and that we have events in the different areas. So I've got some great, great women that are going to be doing that for me across the state. So we're pretty excited. No, I know one of the issues that we've talked about before is the technology world tends to be a men's world uh, and that you're trying to get more women into it. I don't know what the percentages are. It seems like, what, 20 percent women, something in that ballpark like that? Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things that I push real, real hard when I, I mean, I summer Patriot stuff, right? So in my summer camps, I try to get as many women as I can as instructors. Um, and again, I try to make sure that all cultures and diversity are covered in my, in my camp instructors, right? So that when my kid sits down in that seat, whether he's a woman, a man, uh, you know, whatever uh, nationality he is or she is, they see themselves there. They can see that. Pa then we can, we can paint the picture, right? We can show them how this 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 thing that they're learning is a really great career and you know don't dumb yourself down in middle school <laughs> you know because you want to be cool you know uh stay in school keep yourself don't don't put crazy things out on the internet that will make keep you from getting a good security clearance you know all of those good things but yeah it's so important for them to see themselves right and so that's the point that's you know like the reason that I have both jobs after retirement so I tried to retire Mike. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody right? says, when are you going to retire? And I go, what, to fish and play golf? Forget it. Right, you know, right. So. That's what my husband's all the time, right? He's like, I think you're busier than when you were working the ISAC, and you were crazy busy then. And I said, I know, but it's just the startup, and I'm hoping things will settle down a little bit. Oh, but it's just so important, right? Uh, I know, right? Hmm. But it's so important, uh, you know, to get this message out there and to get people working together and getting those girls to, you know, the women. So the women that we have that are already in here can give back. They can become mentors and they can give back. And then those girls can see themselves and those young men as well. The same thing goes for them. You know, I like to have all kinds of folks involved in this so that, that we can get as many in because we're, we're losing it. We're losing the battle, guys. <laughs> Four, you know, 15,000 in Michigan alone, right? That we have open jobs. We, we need no open jobs in cyber. There's no hope for us to be able to retire if we can't get folks in the pipeline. Well, and then of course, the other thing about, like I said, the cyber jobs, when you're, you get your degrees and all your certs, you're looking at some serious green. I mean, oh 200,000, yes. 300,000 a year. I mean, when I worked at the Auto ISAC, I watched this little musical chairs thing happen with all these people that were attending my meetings, right? And we were putting together the education and training stuff. And they would be at one OEM and then at a, and then at a tier one and then a different OEM. And then and each time they jumped, they were making more money. Right? Yeah, otherwise, why do it, right? Like yeah. other right. people salary more money, like three or 30 or 40 grand and pop, right? Yeah. Yeah, like no, people, I... there should not be a reason you're not getting into cyber. Hopefully you and Nando connect because I have a sneaking suspicion he's out there building bridges to pipelines to potential cyber. Yes, definitely. I saw that and I read a little bit of the stuff that, you know, in, in, the, in the prior, uh, you know, meeting set up that I thought, oh, I do have to get a hold of him. And the last thing, I hope you're going to give me a few minutes to talk about the award that's coming up. Oh, so right. Yeah, I'm it. sorry. We go take it away. So our book, so I'm in the middle of a meeting, uh, doing a, a mentor and a coaching meeting for my, my Cyber Patriot stuff. And one of the guys online is Ken Ziegler, who works over at OCC, and he's been an amazing booster for the program forever. And he happens to be our co-writer uh, co for my husband for years. And he says, Tamara, have you read your email lately? And I'm like, well, I'm in the meeting, not right this second. No, I haven't read my email. And he goes, read it now, right in the middle of the meeting. I'm like, Okay. He goes, we're, we're up for a SANS award. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I read my email real quick uh, out to the whole group, right? And apparently we're the top five books of the year by SANS, um, what is it called? Uh, uh, Difference Maker Award. And so between it, they gave us two weeks notice. And then for two weeks, they had a open voting. So that open voting stopped on October 4th. So I am ever so hopeful <laughs> that I'm going to get a trifecta this year. <laughs> You know, woman of the year, uh, president of WAMSA or, or OISIS, and then boom, the book would be just amazing. 